Super Mario World 2. Uh, some of you are probably thinking, what, what, they're making a Super Mario World 2? And the answer is no. They already did. See, most people know it by its subtitle, Yoshi's Island. And you get the sense Nintendo saw it that way too. I mean, even on the cartridge, the, the Super Mario World 2 part, it was so tiny that you might not even notice it at first. And there was a reason for that. It's not really Super Mario World 2. I mean, technically it is, but... Look, not really. I mean, if it doesn't look like Super Mario World, it doesn't play at all like Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island was its own game. In fact, it launched a whole new series. But, for the purposes of branding and marketing, Super Mario World 2. Or how about Super Mario Land 3? You know, that one is Wario Land. It's the exact same situation. A whole new franchise, a whole new series, but kind of started in disguise. Fortunately, Wario is a master of disguise. Now, of course, it's also fortunate that when it came time for his sequel, Wario had proven his mettle. He could headline a game without Mario in the title. He was his own man. His own flatulent, disgusting man. A few boogers later, one solid and voila! Wario Land 2. This stinky little bastard was released in 1998, at a time when Mario was busy anyway. You know, he probably had some blockbuster game that changed the whole... Wait, Mario Party? That's what he was doing in 1998, Mario Party? Poor Wario's out there trying to sell Game Boys, baby! Mario's out partying with a princess and a monkey at the same time. Get a disease that way! And Wario's the bad guy. He used to be the bad guy. Then, just like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Wario was suddenly a good guy. One of the great face turns of the 1990s. Stone Cold and Wario. Now he's the hero. Or at least the anti-hero. Who probably needs anti-perspirant. Point is, bad guys busted into Wario's castle and stole all of his treasure. The, the treasure that Wario stole from them in the first game. But, but he's the good guy. The 90s were a weird time. Anyway, look. Uh, there's a bunch of different areas, each with a bunch of different levels. Look, it's Platformer City. Sounds like a Mario game, right? Yeah, only it's very much not a Mario game. Wario Land has its own feel, its own rhythm, its own smell, Wario smells. And as a result, it definitely feels different enough to warrant the new series. Now, of course, it does have some of the same DNA, so it's got the same basic makeup in terms of its gameplay. 2D platforming with sharp, responsive controls, a guy with a hat. But the context in Wario Land is totally different. You know, whereas the Super Mario games are more action-driven platformers, so they're based on running and jumping, Wario Land is actually kind of more of a puzzle game. But you won't find a lot of tricky platforming sections like you do in Mario. When you do get stuck in Wario Land, it's usually about the puzzles. Where's that thing I need? How do I make my way across that? You know, it's unique. It's like, you know, Wario's a lot more physical than Mario, but in a way, his game's actually more cerebral. Not what you'd expect from a guy who just, who just runs into crap. And what really drives the point home is that Wario can't die. Doesn't matter how many times you fall in a hole or get swallowed by a snake, Wario can't die. That's because the game's action just isn't as important as its puzzles and all its weird objectives. Also because he's very strong. Wario's like, I mean, he can lift like right over his, oh, he's also rich. He's filthy rich. He has great insurance. Actually, it's fortunate that he has that good insurance because even though he doesn't die, he's always hurting himself. In fact, that's another central element of the game's design. Where Mario has power-ups, Wario has, like, powered downs. Bad things happen to him and they affect his abilities. He might get squished into a pancake or set on fire. These altered states actually give him some new abilities and help you get through some of the puzzles. Especially if, if you're in an altered state yourself, which... Look, no biggie. I'm sure, I'm sure Wario can sympathize. I mean, look at him. What do you think he does with all that money? Look at his nose! Dude has a problem. But you know, aside from possible alcoholism, 
He doesn't have many other problems. That's just the way Wario is. He's a problem-free kind of guy. You can maybe say his game's not as exciting or as fast-paced as the Mario games. But even then, look, it's a different kind of game. It's a matter of style. Not bad design, or not certainly not a problem. And frankly, this design, it's anything but bad. It plays great. The presentation's fantastic. The game was also released for the Game Boy Color, but even this black and white Game Boy version looks and sounds great. It totally has that Nintendo charm and polish. And the coolest part is that rather than just do a Mario game with Wario, they actually did something different enough to be a Wario game, and that's awesome. And very smelly. Thanks to Dent from Lake Mississippi for sending it to the show. It's Wario Land 2 for the original Game Boy.